Well, hello. How about a fan showdown, season five, episode seven? We're just gonna get right into it. First up, we have Tom and his fan Dragon Wing. Now, Tom said he noticed that in the comment section of these videos, a lot of people, like a lot, were complaining that no fan could beat the A12X25 without using a whole bunch of fancy add-ons. And after that, he simply said, here you go. I mean, that's uh, it's confidence. Now, Tom's confidence isn't just him making the smug face. He said that he printed out his fan after he designed it and tested it and noticed that he got about 5% increase in its performance. He did go on to say though, to get that 5% increase in performance, he had to sacrifice a little bit in, you know, the noise department. So it is a bit louder than the A12X25, but according to Tom, it's gonna be, it's gonna be better. So I guess that, that raises a question that I'm curious about. If you had this fan, the Dragon Wing, and beside it in the store, you had the A12X25, which one would you pick? Let me know, it'd be interesting to see what uh, everybody's opinion on this. Uh, opinion is on that. Now the Dragon Wing itself, other than its claimed uh, magical performance, does look pretty cool. Each fan blade has that Dragon Wing inspired aesthetic and I think it overall is a nice fan. It was easy to print, which I'm always appreciative of, but all in all, if it was on the shelf, I'd buy it. Now this, now this next one, I don't know if I'd buy it, but like you'd also say that we probably all have at one point or another. This is the A12X25 fan fan and it was created by Leif. And I say created very, lightly here but it did make me laugh when i when i opened up the stl file so i figured that was enough to get me to print it and test it out i mean look at it so cool it's even funnier when it's in a frame it's like what is happening is this the inception of a fan create and perceive our world simultaneously. Now what Leaf did here is he went to uh, GrabCAD and he downloaded the model of the A12X25. I've seen this model, it's on GrabCAD. You all could go there and download it. Um, he saw it as an opportunity. He downloaded it. He said he put it into Fusion 360, immediately got mad, exported it to Blender because he said Fusion 360 is Garbo and um, scaled it down, put a little place out the hub. In the end, what he ended up with was an actual pretty accurate model of the A12X25 that now fits inside of the A12X25, which again, hilarious to me for whatever reason. Leaf said the idea behind this fan was to make it funny, mission accomplished, um, and maybe move air. He wasn't expecting huge gains, but if it moves anything, that's a win. So we'll see. I'd also like to say that printing this thing was amazing. As you can see, I decided to print the, the frame in the, the blue that I printed all the other fans out of, but, now that I have this X1 Carbon, I was like, let's try some multi-material. I printed the anti-vibration pads in white. I printed the motor, or the, not the motor, but the fan disc in white. And I left all the little triangles blue. I think it looks super cool. It came out super well. And then to make it even more of a test on my X1, I printed the support material out of PVA. So when it was all said and done, I just took this fan off the printer, threw it in some water, waited a couple hours, and absolutely perfect print. It's just amazing. It printed it pretty fast too for using three different materials. Even these little nubs or these little, I don't even know what you'd call them. The same thing that are on the regular A12X25, the, the little pieces that stick through the fan frame to hold the vibration pads on. They are in that model and they printed out really well. They look good. None of them broke. It's just amazing. Next up, we have Lara and her fan, Sky Scoop. And I mean, all in all, based on what we see on this, uh, on this show, it's a pretty standard fan. It's five blades, it's relatively thin, it's lightweight. It should perform pretty well given how it's constructed. Yeah, there's really not much you can say about it. It's just pretty standard, it looks good. Moving on. Now this next one, I saved for last because I know a lot of you are just gonna love this idea because I've seen people comment in these videos probably 10 to 20 million times about this design that somebody should do it or I should do it. Well, today's the day. This is the Tesla Turbine and it was created by Igor. Now I find this design intriguing, not only because of how cool or how well it was modeled and how interestingly it went together and how good it looks once it is together, but because of how Igor intends to use this Tesla Turbine. The Tesla Turbine was designed to extract energy from steam, much the same as modern steam turbine generators do nowadays. However, we don't use Tesla turbines. We essentially use what look like two jet engines attached at the ends together. The steam is pumped into the middle and passes through the blades. It spins a shaft, which then spins a generator. Bob's your uncle, you got energy. 
we got electricity. You get it. The Tesla turbine did the same thing, but in a, a little bit of a different way. Instead of a bunch of tiny fins, it had some rotor discs like you see here, and they were stacked much the same as they are here. They had spacing about 0.4 millimeters, which was, I believe, determined to be the best spacing for steam. The steam was piped in at the edge of the disc, and as it moved towards the center where it was exhausted, it kind of drug the disc along with it. Now, the interesting thing about the Tesla turbine is as the speed increased, the efficiency went up. And as those discs rotated, they turned a shaft, which turned a generator. Bob's your uncle. Problem is, the Tesla turbine needed to spin very, very, very fast to uh, be efficient um, at the time, and then I probably still a problem today. The faster that this thing spun, the more force, centripetal force, was imposed on the disc, and eventually they just would rip apart. Now, today we could probably get uh, an alloy that would be able to handle those speeds, but uh, I believe modern steam turbines are in like the high 90 percentile for efficiency, so there's really no point in going back to something like this, but they're cool, the idea is cool, but I don't know, I don't know how well this one's gonna work. What's interesting about Igor's variant of the Tesla turbine is that he intends to use it basically backwards to how the original Tesla turbine was designed. Igor intends to spin the disc with the motor of the A12X25. He wants to draw the air into the center through these normally exhaust ports and then push it out between the discs. Now, knowing that the, the speed of the Tesla turbine kind of directly affects the uh, efficiency of it, the A12X25 is not gonna be putting out that much HP. It's uh, we're, we're pretty much only gonna get around 2000 RPM. Is that enough to move any air at all? I, I don't know, I don't know, but I do wanna see it. I know you all wanna see it, so we're gonna, we're gonna give it a shot. But before you know, we see if it moves any air at all, let's just see if it's quiet, because I would imagine it, at the very least, this thing should make little to no noise. The Tesla turbine came in around 48 dBA. The A12 X25 fan fan came in around 54.5. The Dragon Wing came in around 52. And the Sky Scoop came in around 51. Yeah, so, I mean, it's pretty quiet. Does it move in the air? I mean, kinda. I mean, air did go from one side of the acrylic to the other. Well, it didn't go that fast, but it did. I would say it did move air. So um, we'll see exactly how much. The Dragon Wing came in around 528 feet per minute of airflow. The A12 X25 fan fan came in around 263. The Sky Scoop came in around 423. And the Tesla Turbine came in around, well, zero pretty much that's bad that's as bad as you can get so yeah it didn't work that good but it did print out very very good and it looks cool so that's a thing but did you notice how well the old dragon wing did overall they finished first 16th 29th and 31st so tom tom wasn't messing around he predicted around a five percent gain in performance and in my test he got about eight so he did even better than what he thought he was going to do on my setup, which is pretty insane. So for everybody out there that said, these fans suck because they all add extra stuff that the A12X25 doesn't, well, Tom, 
Tom's here to prove that a good design can achieve great things. Until next time.